Hey team, we are back with another video. We have the Veloy film holder with the 120 and the 35 millimeter holders in here. This was an awesome Kickstarter that um, just came in the mail. Uh, I'm really excited to get looking at it and trying out this new holder. They blew up on Kickstarter with over 150% of what they were looking for. They made over like 100,000 euros. It's pretty crazy. It's an awesome product. We're gonna unbox it in this video, check it out, try it out, and give you guys my first initial thoughts on it. I'm also gonna make another video about how to use this guy and how you can get the best results out of it. Before we get into that, I wanna thank you guys so much for being here. I'm Will Cobb, I'm a film photographer here on the central coast of California. And I make videos about film photography and film developing and all things film. So if you're into those kind of things, if you're into all of that, hit that subscribe button and join me for more videos in the future. So let's open this up and while I'm opening up, I'll talk about what I'm looking at and talk about a little bit about what Veloy is. So the Veloy holder uh, got it in the mail. I've opened it and glanced at it, but I haven't opened it. So this is gonna be y'all's first journey with me. I've got the 120 holder. I've got the 135 holder and the major part about it. So the cool thing about Veloy is, oh, I've got some candies in there too, that's fun. So the cool thing about this Veloy 360 Advancer is it's a universal system. It has a main body and these two holders that you can attach into it. And they also have a bunch of other different attachments you can use as well. So it's this Nice little steel enclosure, I believe. And it's nice and metal, nice and strong. And it has an advancer wheel that goes in here, which is probably in this box. And it should go over my light pretty well too. It's got these accessories. Got a manual in here. Got some little O-rings. And I think the advancer is wrapped up inside of there. We've got these advancing pins. It looks like we've got some nice quality advancing wheels and some leveling feet, which that's really helpful. So this is a whole system. They're developing all sorts of holders for this system. And I didn't get it in mind, but they also have a way to clean your film on the way in uh, to get some of that static off of it. And they have masks for different size 120 film as well. Uh, I didn't get that in mind, but um, it's a really cool company and you should definitely check it out. So we'll just look in here how to do this. It looks like there's an advancer on both sides and a little screw goes in there. So let's assemble it. Okay, so I think you put these pins in first. While it's going in, you put on two O-rings and slide it through all the way. Slide that there, grab our screwdriver, which we talked about in our five things you need to work on cameras video. Screw that in and we'll just move these O-rings. And that's how you can pull through different size films. There's the knob. And there's a little notch on this guy. That's why you wanna put it in through that one side. And then that holds it in there. And then this knob holds it in on the other side. All right, let's put the other one in. So I shouldn't have put that knob on yet. I just got a little excited. Now I'm going to slide this in the opposite direction. I'm going to slide on two O-rings. Now I can put on my knobs. And I can adjust my O-rings on here. All right, I adjusted my O-rings to match up with each other on there. So now there's a little bit of resistance now. I got some spare O-rings, which is pretty cool. And I've got some feet on here. Throw the feet on. And there it is, completely assembled there. The Advancer base. 
Nice rubber feet. Nice O-rings. Good grippy. So now what we do, set this to the side and grab our two holders that go in the top here. So here's the 120 holder. It's a little bit of packaging. Um, it's got some rubber feet too. I'm not 100% sure what that would be for. And then right there we got the holder. This is the 120. And it can come apart and that's how they assemble it. I believe this was originally 3D printed and then when they went to market they got these injection molded or something like that. So yeah, this just goes right in there and settles in just like that. It looks like it doesn't clip or anything. It just kind of sits on top, if I have that correct. And you've also got this 35 millimeter holder. A little bit of packaging, there's the 35. And again, I guess these are little feet. I'll have to look at what those are for. And so the 35 can slot on there real quick. Easily interchangeable. So that's what's kind of cool about this system is it's easily interchangeable. And for me, I'm always shooting all sorts of types of films. So this is really great. I really hope they're gonna be working on a smaller film size. And I think that's what the all the different notches are in there because I definitely wanna to try to shoot some smaller film as well. So that's it, that's all that comes in the box there. And I've got some film, I wanna run through it. So let's try that real quick just to see it. I'm gonna be doing a lot of 120 today. I want to try to run some film through it before I'm scanning it. So let's try to put some through it. I'm gonna flip it around here. Put it through there. Slide it on in a little bit. Okay, it slides in pretty well. Yeah, I like that. And then it's gonna interface with the notches and then I'm gonna pull it through. Oh, there we go. All right, that's it. It looks like it's holding it pretty flat. Yeah, I'm seeing a little bow in the center downwards. It's hard to see, but it's, it's pillowing a little bit in the middle. So that's not the best thing to see, but just a little bit. And I doubt it would do that on 35, but it's doing it just a little bit. I'm not sure if it's grabbing it hard enough. I'm also a little concerned that it's touching the top. So it possibly touching the top is actually one of the things that I worked out with one of my 3D printed film holders. I've got one right here actually, and I made this mouth a lot bigger, especially a lot bigger than this, um, but a lot bigger than a lot of the ones I saw online. I, I think that's really important for not touching the actual film. So not 100% sure if this is gonna scratch or anything, but it would if there was dust in there. I'm a little worried about that, but we're gonna try it out. I think it's gonna work well um, regardless, and I really like it. And you can pull it apart and clean it. So that's something cool too. So I've got it in there. Um, I'm gonna start scanning with it in just a second. But so my initial thoughts on just unboxing it and going ahead and putting a roll of film through it and using the advancer is that it's pretty cool. I like the metal frame. The frame definitely feels sturdy. The knobs feel sturdy. Um, advancing it feels pretty good. I would like to see these clip in, the holders clip in a little bit, but you know, they don't necessarily have to. There's not really a benefit of it. That just little bit of shift might, uh, it's probably not gonna cause any issue, but it would be interesting if it like clipped in somehow, but, but I mean, I really like just how sturdy it is. I like these that you just slap anything on there. I think they've got a panoramic 35 coming. So it is really nice. Um, price wise, this thing runs for about 200 US dollars um, for just the Advancer. And then you have to buy these plates individually for $45, which makes this whole setup closer to $300. So um, it's not cheap, but it does seem like it's made out of really nice materials. They do say like that it's made for life. And, and I think it's a really great product to 
get scanning and developing. I think it's a good price range. So I'm gonna put it through its paces with six rolls of film right now, and I'll see how it's scanning and if that pillowing is a problem. Usually you can fix that in Lightroom so it's not a big deal, but yeah, I'm gonna check it out and I'll let you guys know my final verdict at the very end. Okay, I've got my scanning setup dialed in for today. I'm using an A7 III. I've got it on a cage because uh, for 120, I need to turn the camera sideways to get as much resolution as possible. It is sitting on a negative supply, the base tower holder thingy. And I'm using a Relino video light, which actually Veloy said that they're making a base for this that can actually hold this specific light and that's actually why I got this one. I also got it because it was only 45 bucks. It was really cheap and um, I actually 3D printed my own holder for it and that one works really well. Um, and hit me up on Instagram if you want that combo. The light source has like a 95 CRI and it's really nice. It it's works, works really well for me. So there's one more thing I noticed actually with this copy stand, this is new to me, um, that this actually leans a little bit with a heavier camera. Um, it might even lean a little bit with a lighter camera. Uh, just how simple this whole setup over here um, is. Uh, the materials are nice, but it leans a little bit. So to counteract that, the has those height adjusting feet. So that actually works really well with this setup right now. Um, I'm scanning a ton of different film today. Um, some from a wedding, some from when uh, Taylor Davis, one of my Film Friend Friday interviews, he came out to California and I saw him. I took a couple of shots of him and Kira, uh, who's another incredible film photographer. And it was so awesome seeing them and shooting them. So I'm scanning a ton today. Uh, I need to get through it all, so let's get to it. All right, so I scanned six rolls of film through this thing tonight, all 120, and I gotta say it worked really well. A couple of things about it was a, it was a little fiddly trying to get it through on the very first part uh, when you were starting out. And then for some reason, maybe this is user error, but I thought you could control it from one side, but you gotta kinda fiddle with both of these knobs at the same time, and sometimes it's confusing. Uh, which direction you're going with it, but but ultimately that really wasn't a big issue. It held it very sturdy and straight, and with the new light stand, it actually worked really well. I was able to keep the focus exactly where it was, advance it, um, blow it off with a little air, um, and keep going with it. So I actually think this thing worked out really well. Um, I was just looking through some of the images, and it's really sharp on the edges, so it actually was pretty flat. I don't think I noticed too much of that bowing, um, that I saw with my eyes. Maybe it was just a glare or something. Um, but yeah, and then again, even if that Boeing was there, I could adjust it a little bit with Lightroom. So the Veloy 360, I keep saying like Valero or something. I don't know why I want to say that. But uh, I think this thing's pretty awesome. Um, um, aside from that little fiddly bit, I, I think it's really cool. I think it's really good concept for this. It's different than a lot of the things I've seen. And I think it's a really great option for people. You kind of have the one-time purchase of this big piece and then you can modular add pieces as you go, um, as you have money, as you switch into medium format or something like that, or you want the dust thing. I actually think I might order the dust thing because I did have a lot of dust. I, I think it's a really cool product and awesome job over there, guys. So guys, I really appreciate y'all watching this video. That was the overview of the Veloy 360 and um, my first impressions of it. Next week, I'm gonna do a how-to on how to use it specifically and set up your DSLR scanning setup with it. So guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Again, stay tuned to that next week's video. If you liked this video and everything that I'm doing here, definitely subscribe. Write down in the comments, tell me what you wanna see from me in the future other things that you want me to do, anything you want me to check out, and I read all the comments, I comment down there, hit me up on Instagram, one will cop, and uh, I love chatting with you guys. Any questions that you have there, I don't know everything, but I would love to help you with the things that I do know, so at least reach out, and I would love to talk to you on 
Instagram or down in the comments. Guys, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.